welcome uh, to the panel discussion Humor as a Weapon. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here today and really to have this discussion because it is quite an experiment. It's quite a challenge to talk about humor and uh, to bring together both, let's say, practitioners of humor and uh, people who are dealing with it on the scholarly basis, on the academic basis. So uh, the idea is to talk about um, humor as such during the war, generally it functions, and also about how does it change, how has it changed since the beginning of the large-scale invasion. And um, I, I hope that we will raise a lot of questions, quite an un, quite unexpected one, uh, and I hope it will be a fusion. So it is there the live discussion that we're having here. And you are also warmly welcome to join us. So just raise a hand if you have uh, a question. And um, let's start with the introduction. Um, Urs Nugent is one of Swedish most prominent stand-up comedians. And um, he is also a scriptwriter, TV show host, and is very, is a very famous uh, personality here in Sweden and maybe in Nordic countries in, in general. He is a uh, release of the performance, Bad Mood, um, was, was a great success uh, in both Sweden and Norway. And when the performance was shown on SVT, the, the television um, in Sweden, the following year, became one, one of the most shared videos on SVT play. My pleasure Thank to you. see you today. Thank you so much. Svetlana uh, Nemanezhina is a famous Ukrainian stand-up comedian. She has been in stand-up for years since she was a teenager. And she got uh, po uh, especially popular recognized when uh, she succeeded in the Make a Comedian Laugh, a popular show on uh, Ukrainian TV. Welcome, Svetlana. Thank you. Vasil Baidak is a prominent Ukrainian stand-up comedian as well. He has his very special genre of absurdism. And um, he is quite a star in, in, in Ukraine. Now, both Svetlana and Vasil are having tours. And they made an exception for us. Sorry. <laughs> Part of the absurdism. <laughs> yeah. Era so, in Kiev is over. So. so it's very important that you were able to come uh, for, especially for this discussion, because I know that you are uh, fully involved in their stand-up and volunteering as such. We will talk about this. So uh, we appreciate it very much to he to see you today. So Vasil Baidak. You're also uh, there, the part of the theater, which is called Sparrow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, uh, theater Sparrow. So welcome, Vasil. <laughs> and last but not least is Daria Ansebor, who is a PhD, who has PhD in folklore studies. She is the researcher in State Scientific Center for Cultural Heritage in Kiev, and also, so she is a folklorist and anthropologi uh, anthropologist. Um, she is here because she she's like an encyclopedia of um, traditions, folklore, but also she knows a lot about humor and how it works. So she will crack it for us today. Welcome, Daria. I hope so. Now, I would like to start uh, from the scratch. Dear practitioners from the humor, can you please tell your stories? How did you generally become people who are dealing with humor, with comedia? How did you become comedians? Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> An unexpected question. Um. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I started uh, to be a stand-up comedian when a stand-up is <laughs> mm. I became a stand-up comedian when there was no such a charm to stand-up. Uh, no one has known what it is. Uh, 
гумористичній грі командні. От, мені дуже сподобалось. When I was in school, uh, I joined the comedian team and I really liked it. І потім е, я спробувала в командній грі е, зіграти одна, і мені сказали, о, так це стендап. And then I, as a part of the team, I tried to play on my own, and I perform on my own, and everybody said, oh, you're a stand-up comedian. І в Україні тоді ще не було стендап-руху, і ніхто з людей взагалі не знав, що таке стендап. Всім глядачам треба було пояснювати. Ми самі не знали, що таке стендап. Ми просто щось розповідали смішне, люди сміялися, ми такі, ну, мабуть, це стендап. And at that time, no one actually knew in Ukraine what stand-up is. Uh, every time when we performed, we had to explain people we were not sure ourselves, but this is how it developed and started. Так я і почала. This is how I started. <laughs> That's my story. Uh, I try in English. Uh, I have Duolingo, so <laughs> to practice. Uh, yeah, uh, I start to... Uh, I think it's from the school, because in school I was not very tall and not very strong boy, so humor is... Uh, and, and I didn't drink alcohol, so uh, humor must be... Uh, because it must be some social glue uh, in, uh, in, in school and humor was that, because when you tell jokes and people uh, laugh, uh, they love you and, and uh, they don't uh, kick you. So, <laughs> so that's why humor, I think that yeah, humor is very, is very strong um, uh, instrument in, in social, um, in social um, relationship. Thank you, relationship. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, and, and then uh, some, some um, humor groups and I don't know how it's to translate. Uh, it's it's similar to when some group of of, of people uh, connect uh, to make some sketches and different types on the on the, on the stage. Uh, so that was uh, then and then uh, stand up uh, and this is it. And here is conference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I tried the stand up comedy for the first time in '99, and I tried it, and it worked for me for the first time. And I sec 1999, yeah, wow. May 1999, yeah, and, and I, I did that and it's, uh, it, it was good, you know, like, okay, it's, it's rather good. And then the next week I did the same and it was a catastrophe, <laughs> you know, and then I began to think, why did it go well the first time and why, why was it a catastrophe the, the second time? And then I tried to analyze. Why and then because I'm a, I'm an, in, my my ground is uh, acting you know I'm a theater actor and uh, and for me stand up comedy is the most efficient uh, the most uh, easy way the most uh, when it works it's, it's it's the funniest thing you can do but when it's bad it's the worst thing you can do <laughs> so it's uh, and then I have uh, you know I'm like you I'm not tall. I'm not strong. Yeah. I couldn't be in the team with the football or the basketball team, you know, and I'm not good looking. So what was left? <laughs> <laughs> That's what. And what about you, Daria? Uh, so you're studying humor. Is it something, uh, something new for you that has happened um, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in your attention uh, since the invasion or, or it was part of your interest before that? Um, I used to write also some um, plays at school for my class, like usually this presentation and some stuff like this. But it wasn't like a really like into humor or stuff like this. But uh, actually I just, uh, I was really interested as a scholar in the protests, so I started digging deeper into Maidan context and the, the Orange Revolution, and of course there was lots of love there. Uh, there. So for this reason, actually, actually, the original idea for me was to dig deeper why even we have the, the crisis, we want to love so much, and uh, why we love this way, not the other way around. And uh, so basically, it's bit, yeah, originally it's from this Maidan and from uh, the protest, how I got deeper and deeper into humor context as well. And uh, Svetlana, you mentioned that you've started when stand-up didn't exist in Ukraine. Uh, uh, can you please tell us more on how uh, this phenomena has been developing? How, so how, uh, when did, uh, did you finally could say that you are a stand-up comedian and everyone, everyone would recognize this as as something that exists in Ukraine. So how, how the, the scene, uh, their stand-up comedian scene was developing in, in Ukraine? This is 
question both for, for you and uh, for Vasil. Можно перекласти? Так, ви сказали, що почали ще тоді, коли не було стендапу в Україні. Розкажіть, як взагалі починався цей рух, рух як, як створювалися, можливо, якісь спілки чи місця, де, де ви практикували гумор як жанр? Ми з Василем приблизно в один час починали, Василь трошки раніше. We almost, Vasily and I we almost started at the same time, Vasily uh, a bit earlier. Uh, and, uh, Kharkovi, and in Kharkov, there were not many events, maybe less than one in a month. We started in Kharkov and there were not many events going on, just uh, there was a party once a month. Uh, in Kyiv it was more active, there was a little more in a month. Uh, in Kiev, there were more. <laughs> more uh -huh. In Kiev, uh, it, the the movement was a bit uh, more active. There were two parties a month. Uh, I, I need to think. Uh, I can. With the best of them. Yeah, I started to I think that uh, a lot of comedians look at some films uh, from, U from USA, from, uh, from England uh, about stand-up and some stand-up specials, for example, Eddie Murphy or, uh, I don't know, Carlin, because Carlin we know, because we have some different kinds of short video uh, from Carlin uh, where he say about airports or about sexuality or politics. Uh, and uh, and from that time, I think that uh, some comedians in Ukraine think, oh, it's very interesting uh, type of uh, live on stage alone and uh, to tell jokes, to tell some 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 things. Uh, and uh, f for me, it's from uh, Andy Kaufman from the film uh, Man on the Moon. Uh, yeah, and, and there I, I I saw Andy Kaufman and I said, oh, it's it's absurd to it's 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 stand up. Com com it's a stand-up. Wow! I want to do like this. I want to eat uh, ice cream on a stage and everyone, every, everyone laughing. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, so that, that's what my 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 role to, to stand up from from that film. And I think in Ukraine we have some collective uh, groups what made some sketches. It's it's similar to I don't know. In, 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 in uh, here you have some types of when, when some groups of comedian make some sketches, but yes. You have, uh, yeah, and uh, it's like a championship, or yeah, uh, you can have uh, both ways, you know, like. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in Ukraine it was the first when when we have some some this type. But what in Ukraine? It's a group group of people, and in group of people, uh, not everyone popular in this group. <laughs> Just maybe one front man and uh, or front woman, and and uh, uh, everybody love her or he uh, how he make jokes, but. Um, Another group of people, uh, what in this group, uh, they, oh, we want, to, <laughs> people love us too. So their stand-up uh, is, is that type of comedia when you make joke, you go on a stage and you did it. And if it's good, it's, it's, you, you do it by yourself. If it's wrong, you do it by yourself. It's just own, own comedian on the stage, not a group. So that was some type of from collective to individual. Uh, I think it, it it was that type in Ukraine where it must be. And who were the target audience before, let's say, a couple of years before the invasion? Uh, because I'm wondering how it has shifted since the invasion. So and we will come to that, but. Are these the same people now and back then, or those this, what, that there was a smaller team of people who were generally interested in this type of things? Who was on stand-up before? Before. Uh -huh. uh, I actually want to ask you. I Коли ми починали стендап, ми ще не, не знали, як він має виглядати, і багато вечірок були не найсмішніші. When we started, we also didn't know this format of stand-up, so we tried, and some parties were not successful, not very funny sometimes. Тому я дуже вдячна глядачам, які на початку нас підтримували, приходили на стендап. Мені вони відчуваються як батьки, які ти типу, пошов ти робив, просто такі молодець. Давайте, робіть. And I'm very grateful to the audience who kept coming despite our failures and supported us. And to me, I feel 
uh, their role was as parents who would support and come and encourage you whatever you do. <laughs> but there were some bad parents <laughs> as well. З приводу відмінностей до і після, мабуть, дуже багато глядачів лишились ті, що слідкували від початку, але і з'явилось багато нових. The audience which came and watched us before the war stayed, but during the war new people joined and also started coming. Ну і напевно тепер ми переходимо до найбільш... Ага, я говорю українською. And I'm speaking Ukrainian. Uh, so, and um, probably we are coming to the most uh, important subject and it is humor during the war. So I'm wondering how has, this, how has it shifted since the invasion? Um, did, did it change as a genre? Uh, have it changed in terms of jokes that you are dealing with? and also in terms of audience that you are hosting and talking to during your stand-up comedy? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, my genre of uh, comedy is change uh, 1000 percent because uh, 100, uh, because uh, before invasion I was in, in comedy of absurd uh, different types of I, I, like similar to Monty Python, Mighty Bush, Andy Kaufman, uh, Hans Steinman, uh, and uh, similar to this. But from f after the invasion, I understand that I don't want to make absurd jokes because they don't. Absurd jokes you can joke just, uh, uh, just if even in your country, even in your social, is all okay. Because uh, you can't make jokes about some dreaming uh, in, in the sky and, and, and about some, uh, some fantastic worlds, uh, what you imagine in your mind, because you want to be uh, very close to audience. Because you, you, you can't tell with audience what uh, feel war, what uh, in war now, you, you can't tell some jokes what about some different uh, types of can, uh, horses uh, on a bike. So <laughs> it's... it's, it's um, so yeah, my genre uh, is change, and uh, from the stage we, we, we speak with audience about the attempts, what they know about the war, about invasion, about Russians, about about uh, weapons, about explosions, about uh, missiles, and everything. It's because because we we feel that we uh, that that humor is very helpful now, and it's very important for audience what came to us or watch uh, from YouTube, for example. And it feels, it, it is also um, uh, the psychological therapy. I, I remember myself, so the invasion, it, it is mm, probably the only thing that I was able to, to, de to watch. Uh, and it, it was sort of a healing to myself when I was able to, to think um, out of this uh, drama and uh, horrific things that are happening this particular moment in, in Ukraine, so, yeah? yeah? And, and my first special for, for after the invasion has a name that Russia stolen my absurd, because I feel it, uh, because uh, everything what you hear from, from Russia, uh, it's more absurdic that I can, uh, <laughs> I can, I can tell, I, I can, I, I can make a joke, it's absurd, but they make this absurd real, like, <laughs> and, 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 and I feel it. I feel that everything what I tell, it's, it's, it's. I, I tell, I can, I can make some fantastic world, but then we, I hear some news from Russia, and it's more absurd from. <laughs> so that's why I, I, uh, I say that, that that when Ukraine win, I, I, I hope that one of reparation of Russia will be uh, <laughs> that they give us absurd back. <laughs> Uh, we will have today uh, their, uh, the meeting at the Canadian Embassy and probably you could um, tell this particular statement oh. to, to our partner there. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I wanted to ask um, also us um, about, I know you are also the person who is actively involved in U Ukrainian issues. Uh, you were um, participating in the demonstrations organized by Nordic Ukraine Forum. You were speaking there, and um, generally you were very emotional when, when you are talking. In, uh, 
when you are talking about Ukraine and, and your support. Um, and also, um, it is very visible from, from your uh, comedy that um, there are certain statements that you articulate very clearly. Uh, you reflect on, on your background and um, you, in one of your stand-up you mentioned that you came um, with, a, with a family of political um, asylum seekers who come um, for, um, as Kurds. And, this, that, and that you came not to assimilate to Sweden, but to be Kurd. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wondering about the politics of hum humor and um, uh, watching it as an instrument of something very important that you are able to share to the world, to say as an ultimate. So how, how do you use the humor and how important it is in relation to do this thing that matter to you? As being a part of a, a, a people that have been oppressed for a thousand years now in the Middle East, uh, our way of living in Kurdistan, and we are like 60 million people now, our way of living is the resistance, is, is the, it, it's a resistance to laugh at your enemy. Because you're oppressed, you're the poor one, uh, you are the one that doesn't have uh, any weapons or as much weapons as, as them or you are less than they are and so on, so on, so on. So the weapon you have is your culture, your language, your, your, your uh, ability to laugh at your enemy. Because when you laugh at your enemy, they don't have the power over you. They lost the power. That is the best way to act as a human being. Because that is the, the, the lost power you have as an oppressed, as the, uh, the weak one. Because when you laugh at your oppressor, then their power are disappearing. And, and for me, the laughter is one of the ways. You have music, you have literature, you have uh, theater, you have movie making, you have everything like that, and your language. But the laughter is the last thing they can take away from us yeah. as a human being. Because that's the most powerful thing. The one who laughs last, laughs best, you know. And that is the main purpose for me to act in Sweden also, because as a, as a Kurdish uh, comedian and actor, uh, I'm not just oppressed by the Turkish regime or the Iranian or the Iraqi or the Syrian regime. I'm also a group that is not uh, really accepted. I'm appreciated because I'm quite successful in my job here in, in Sweden, but still, like, my comedy is not as fine or not as articulated or not as high art as their comedy, because they can always say that my comedy is the comedy of the foreigners or the comedy of, you know, uh, outlanders, you know, like, not, not the kind of... But all comedy is the same, always, because it's universal to love, and all comedy comes from from you. As a stand-up comedian, it has to come from you. Your, your jokes, your way of seeing the world, uh, you know, your script, because it's you. And it's, it's, a, it's an explosion of you on the stage. It's like 100%, 1000% of you on the stage, but your mind and your ability to speak and create some laughter at them. So for me, it's always been like, um, my Kurdishness is uh, very important because we, we, our, our language is forbidden in, in Kurdistan. So when we fled here, you know, to, to Sweden, uh, my father told us you have to get integrated, not to be vanished. Because if we wanted to be vanished, then we could be left in Kurdistan and just say, we are now also Turks as our occupators, you know, our occupiers. So if, if, if I told them that I am a Turk also, then I wouldn't have any problems, because Turkey have occupied Kurdistan. And, uh, and I think it's the same for Ukrainians. Because if Ukrainians say they are Russian, no problem for them. But you don't want that, because you have the right to your language, to your country, to your culture, to your being. And uh, as, as this panel is, humor is a weapon, and a very powerful weapon. You know, like they told me, uh, when, the, when, when the news came from now, after the earthquake, they said that uh, uh, 
the earthquake that happened now in Kurdistan and Turkey and Syria is, is the worst thing that happened to that area for 100 years. Uh, no, it's Erdogan. You know, <laughs> you know, like that. And if you can't, you have to find the, you know. And now Erdogan doesn't need your, his tanks and his uh, uh, airplanes and his bombers. Mother Nature did that. <laughs> so he doesn't need to do that because he would do that anyway. So you have to find some things, you know. Yes, it's, it's a disaster, but if you can't laugh at the disaster, you can't live as a human being because that is our way of living. And uh, like you said, it's, sometimes it's the only way to heal yourself. It's to laugh at the misery that you're living in. And this world is a misery, very, you know, yeah. So you have to laugh. It's, yeah. it's your, it's your, it's an obligation as a human being to laugh, to make other people laugh, to keep your smile on your face when the times are harsh, when the, it's hard to live, and when your uh, relatives are being bombed or are getting killed. It's, it's your, you know, it's your duty to have that faith and to fight for them with your culture, with your language, with your way of being, you know, so Ukraine, the Ukrainians uh, are very brave people and you have to stay brave to keep your culture, keep your language, keep your humor, your, your satire, your, your way of living and, and that is very important for every oppressed people, for every oppressed people, or you will vanish, you know, like other people's Absolutely, and there are the parallels also with Russian colonial politics through, their, uh, through the years, I mean, when Ukrainian language was banned yeah. and uh, we were not able to read literature in Ukrainian, write literature in Ukrainian, and people were tortured and uh, just uh, have, were disappearing if they were articulating their Ukrainian identity. So uh, there are definitely the, uh, the, uh, the parallels uh, between their um, resistance, culture and humor. So humor makes us um, stay alive and still feel the, this uh, active resistance. And uh, Daria, I would like to ask you to tell us more on their, their humor as being historically uh, known uh, among U Ukrainians and maybe uh, you have the, you have prepared the presentation oh, so you yes. can tell us a bit more on how humor has changed than the, since the beginning of invasion right uh, yeah and this is particularly what the presentation yes, I oh. decided that it's quite oh. difficult to talk about memes without showing memes <laughs> <laughs> Why you don't tell us that we must we can do a presentation? <laughs> can you please start the presentation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've decided that it's quite difficult yeah, otherwise. So yeah, basically maybe I can if it's okay, I'll just move maybe there, here, whatever. So the trick is that when we talk a little bit about humor, we have to remember that, yeah, really it's, it's a real weapon and I'm just going a little bit deeper into the scholar part of the way. The next, please, next slide. Yeah, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about memes because everyone is sharing them, like literally everyone, of course. But let's start from the very beginning. It was in the 70s when Richard Dawkins decided to write a great work, which is called the uh, sensitive, uh, sorry, selfish gene. And what he did, he said that it's a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. So it is very similar to the gene, and it can be replicable. But the trick is that uh, it can be replicable, replicable, it can be viral as well. But there are some, basically, some features, some specific steps that we have to follow in order to this meme to become really viral. So, the, so it's a replicable unit of culture, but the trick is that the success of transmitting depends on basically three factors. So the first one is you really have to will, yeah, you have to have this willing to share this experience with the other ones, then of course you also need to, to have the society ready for this kind of uh, interaction. And uh, so this should be a request from the society to laugh, as Oskar has just said. And also the memes have to be relevant. If they're not relevant, if it's not a real a good timing, the time is a, in these jokes, it's always the, one of the major reasons why we want to share it or we don't want to share it. So the timing should be perfect. Next one. 
Yeah, and uh, so memes helps a lot actually to show who we are, why we are there, and uh, how it looks like. So the following the full-scale invasion, Ukrainians actually started to deal, uh, not only Europe started to deal with the problem of uh, reinventing Ukraine, rediscovering Ukraine, but also Ukrainians themselves started to feel uh, that they have to uh, shift, yeah, to maybe challenge some knowledges that they have already known because of this uh, colonizational past, yeah, colonized uh, colonize identities that we also had somewhere there deep in our minds. So for this reason, actually, memes helped some, in some way to, memes and jokes and stand-ups and so on, all this, the humor helped a lot to dig deeper into these problems and to discover ourselves for ourselves as well, not only to the outer world, but also to ourselves. So the knowledge is challenged and all values are challenged and uh, you feel that your culture is not stereotyped anymore, it's not rudimentary, it's actually fresh, new and bright and it can be shown for everyone. Next one. Yeah. And uh, we've just started mentioning some of these major things, why we laugh when we actually it's better to cry. And uh, so some of these, the explanations are that, first of all, we want to focus on things which are wrong. We want to name them. We know to name the oppressor. We, know to, we want to name the problem and to spark the resistance on it. So for this reason, there are so many memes about the way how we mock Russians. Yeah, in very different ways, but this is like the, the part of their identity now, also to start mocking them in every possible way, in the most creative way sometimes. And uh, then, of course, it's a coping strategy, because what we do is we want to respond to the disastrous moments in our, of our life like, right now. Yeah, we want to respond it, but uh, and it's like a way to adapt ourselves to a new reality. And it's, of course, also the way that we, when we make fun of something and we see that another person also understand that, understands us, it means that we basically we create a circle, right? So, I know that this person is the same as me, so we are sharing the same experience, that means that we are in the same team. So actually, what we see here is that laughter helps a lot to increase this group cohesion. So, to glue together, as Vasil has just said, yeah, so the jokes create the solidarity of people, of the society, inside of society, for those who laugh at the oppressor's uh, eyes, yeah? Faces. And so it's a group building mechanism which helps us to stay together, to stay sane. And the last, but yeah, maybe not least, but one of the things, of course, is a ther um, therapeutic way of finding this new language adequate enough to articulate the calamity, yes, the uh, ordeal, what we are dealing with. So, because sometimes it's just you can't find the right words, it's impossible sometimes to write, find these usual words to describe what we are feeling. Yeah? But actually jokes can help us to find this way and still to articulate it. Thank you. So, and I've uh, presented just a few maybe typical yeah, memes that uh, some groups of the memes that we could have seen starting from this uh, first uh, days of the full-scale invasion in Ukraine. And of course the classic example is the sunflower seeds, because uh, there was a lady that uh, greeted uh, Russian soldiers, Russian invasions with the uh, phrase that maybe you can uh, fill your pockets with sunflower seeds in order that your death wouldn't be so in way. At least you would grow the sunflowers in our land. So for this reason, you can see a meme with the portrait of a known Russian soldier, and that's how we yeah, started to... Uh, that's an interesting one, actually, to see that the nature will still win. Yeah, whatever it takes, still the nature will take it. Next one. Yeah, Chernobyl jokes are really, really interesting example that uh, that was the first... Uh, uh, when, when the Kiev Oblast was uh, deliberated and we all saw what was going on in the Chernobyl, the most contaminated areas, the Russians dig, dig, um, had uh, dug trenches. And uh, that was quite, quite impressive to see that there were lots of jokes and uh, the scientists really noticed it very fast that the jokes from the original Chernobyl folklore from the time of when the, uh, the nuclear power plant uh, erupted from that period, they were basically, as we said, like replicable in these modern folklore as well. And we also see this uh, interesting example here with the way what happens with the body after the radiation. And on the other hand, we also see Chernobyl, the legendary air, air 
uh, base uh, on the uh, outskirts of um, Kherson, there were actually Russians were losing the parts of their body. So here you can get them more, there you can lose them. And uh, this is again about the nature, that nature takes it all back, yes, and will do the thing. So even every tree, every piece of grass, every piece of land in Ukraine is against Russians. Basically these memes are about this kind of stuff. Yeah, and of course, uh, once we start talking about courage, bravery, and the way how we want to speak it up, of course, we would also talk about this determination uh, of Ukrainian people and uh, how brave we are. We always, of course, also want to focus on it in our memes as well, that when the world is scared to death, Ukrainians keep moving, keep doing it, and we won't stop. That, this is basically how these memes are, uh, what these memes are uh, trying to represent. Okay, next one. Yeah, and I guess for the foreigners it was number one. Like this topic was the major one. How farmers in Ukraine hijacked tanks. I guess that was the. If, if to look uh, what kind of memes were super popular, super common in the, the um, Western t Twitter, that would be, I guess, number one. Because uh, people were really uh, in the West were really surprised to the idea that just a simple Ukrainian farmer can hijack a tank. <laughs> so for these reasons, there were lots of lots of uh, funny jokes about the way how sneaky the farmers are and how tanks are afraid of uh, just even entering Ukraine. Okay. Uh, looting was a very, very big deal, not only for Ukrainians, but for the whole world as well, because it was something that no one would ever expect that that kind of things would be happening in the 21st century and that kind of things would be the, pro the uh, interest of being stolen, you know, like for example the lingerie, Ray or the, I don't know, even the sneakers, and there were of course lots of interception calls, they were, uh, you could still, you could find it on YouTube, for example, you can hear it, that there were lots and lots of uh, interception calls where actually Russian wives or partners were asking their, their partners in Ukraine, the soldiers, uh, to steal, let's say, a blender or a washing machine or, yeah, a lingerie. So, for this reason, there were lots of memes that what kind of ridiculous things can happen, you know, and uh, how unusual is it, it is. Yeah, and that's a great meme by uh, Sander Grepov where he says the expectation reality that the Russian soldier would be thinking about how he would come back home and the reality that they can come back home only as a dead body in a black, uh, yeah, plastic box, uh, bag. Mm -hmm. And uh, another topic that I would like to raise is, of course, the food as a weapon in the resistance, because it's a huge deal in Ukrainian folklore and uh, in Ukrainian culture, like in every culture, food is how we actually can communicate without telling anything. Yeah, you just come to your grandma and you see this table and she doesn't need to tell you anything. You just see the table and you already know how she loves you. And uh, so food helps you to communicate when you don't know how to say it. And that's a very, very, I would say, great example with this last meme. Uh, it is actually a real photo that was taken by a lady from the southern uh, region. And uh, she was leaving her home and she left a note saying that she poisoned <laughs> some food there. So it's super interesting to notice that you see even when the invader comes and you have nothing left, you left your house, you don't know what's going on in the future, yeah? But you left your house and you leave it on your own rules. Because the, once the invader comes, he is still, he, he can't do anything, you know, he still has to follow your rules because this, this is how, this is how you still have to resist. And it's very interesting with this old lady also in the borscht too, that she is also poisoning the borscht and it's written to liberators, as Russians like to call themselves everywhere. Yeah, and uh, so food is a very, very interesting example how we can show it through the food. Mm, yeah, counterfeits of course was a huge deal because uh, uh, there were lots of, and most of the jokes were about actually the way how uh, you, uh, the Russian soldiers were not prepared at all and how the propaganda was trying to fix what was going on. So of course the main meme were about these phrases actually, how the Russians were reacting, saying that the counteroffensive, uh, the offensive is going according to the plan, yes, and they're asking like is it our offensive or their offensive? And then the, for the, great, the great ones were, of course, when they were saying that there is no panic at all, no panic at all, but yeah, we all knew that what happened. 
And that's my favorite one about the sticks, the river of the dead, that they are crossing the river of the sticks. And the watermelon, again, is the food, you see, because watermelon became a huge symbol of this counteroffensive in the south. Uh, and uh, I would like to read also to talk a little bit about the volunteer context in the way that uh, we all saw that uh, there are lots of memes are actually about the way that whatever you ask, the volunteer would bring it to you. The plane, okay, how much does it cost? Let's let's find a plane. Or, or for example, the, the, the army troop is asking, for example, for a small car and you're gonna have the big one, like, and uh, with everything else. And, of course, this question is about the Russians trying to spread panic, but they're gonna get only the huge resistance and huge donations, and this is how we do it very fast, okay? Uh, that's just the part I couldn't avoid, because nukes and Chekhovitsa were, the <laughs> were great. <laughs> so, uh, the trick with nukes was that it was a very, very uh, huge thing in, uh, around in October, and the trick was that, of course, the Russians were saying that they're gonna use the they would use the nukes, and the Ukrainians started planning an orgy in the central historical part of Kyiv. And so, once the, uh, there would be a bombing, we're gonna meet there, and there's gonna be a huge sex orgy. So that was quite fun in a way, and that's how actually we released the stresses again. We can see it like this therapeutic way. And also there was an interesting example of the way how we deal with stress as well, that you just have to donate more. Donate more, and you're gonna reveal your, yeah, all your problems in this way. And it was quite interesting also to see that even all old, old ladies, also were elderly people, were really, really interested in this orgy as well. Of course, everyone would like to come. <laughs> and there were also even the examples when we had this first serious um, massive um, missiles attacks that people started writing the messages, these jokes about like, is it already the time to go on, to go there? Is it the time? Can I go there? So on. Next one. Yeah, blackouts were logically the another problem that we were all dealing with. And there were lots of jokes about, especially the way how you have to reorganize your own uh, space and your own life in a way that yeah we have to maybe and it was it's a very interesting example with the first meme because we see that yeah we are without electricity we are without water we are without everything but we still eat shrimps because so even even when everything is really really bad we still would uh, uh, have higher standards of living than the Russians that trying to uh, yeah oppress us. Yeah, and that was a really great example with Bear Grylls trying to teach some life survival skills in Ukraine, but you were like, no, no. <laughs> okay, next one. Yeah, so I'm very approaching to the end. Famous people, it's a common thing that we uh, keep facing every time when there is some other new famous person, the celebrity coming or the politician coming. Today is Biden, for example, so of course we're going to see lots of memes about Biden today. But yeah, that's quite interesting to see that uh, Johnson, Johnson Nuke, as we call him in Ukraine, that's the, I would say, one of the uh, biggest examples of this uh, favorite famous person that uh, likes, uh, likes Ukraine at all. Okay, next. And yeah, military humor, it's another thing, because now, for example, with all this, uh, new supplies coming, we also see another, we're facing another problem that was the, the engineers, yeah, the mechanics in the army, they're actually dealing with this huge stress because they have to learn how to fix it, everything. And also there is another thing that, of course, everyone wants to get this new equipment, everyone wants to be, you know, to ride a leopard, but uh, obviously someone would still have this old uh, tanks uh, to work with, so there are some inner jokes for military people, yeah, in the army. And these are, yeah, so just uh, some, this is the brand new one basically, like from yesterday, because, uh, uh, so the, the thing is that, yeah, we can see that the memes are keep rolling, rolling, rolling and coming, it's a never ending story, it's very difficult to uh, trace them all, uh, and, uh, but it's really interesting to see that they are all actually about the way that, yeah, they glue us together, they have this an heritage that is very tangible, and it's, immediately it has an influence for every one of us. So we find the strength, find how to cope, bend together, yeah, and uh, yeah, do everything that it's possible to win. That's basically what we do. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm so ready to be Thank you very much, Daria. It was a truly fantastic uh, 
demonstration of all the scale of jokes that have been pumping since the invasion and um, probably if you haven't um, understand some of them, you didn't have time to read the translations, um, perhaps we will leave the presentation so on the website that you can get back to that. But uh, you brought the context of how intense um, both the humor is, what could what broad types of topics it could reflect on, but and I'm wondering how um, how fast does it change since the invasion, and generally how you were uh, you were choosing topics you would like to have to make jokes about. Uh, uh. When invasion was started, it was very important the spams because it, because you because you you are very uh, scary and you want to, to to make some jokes and when people laugh about this you you may, you feel uh, better and people feel better because for example when the Russian uh, told uh, on the news that uh, they will uh, destroy Kiev uh, for three days and everyone knows that the Russian army is second army in all of the world, it's very powerful and everyone when in Ukraine, uh, not everyone, I think that, that a lot of people think that it's, uh, it's, it's not true but uh, for example my parents, me and my friends, they think that yeah, it's very powerful army so it will be very hard and um, then, when we saw some photos of some uh, this tanks what was exploded, some helicopters was exploded by our armies, and, uh, a lot of uh, crushed uh, Russian technique, um, we saw that maybe it's not very powerful uh, 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 army. And then became uh, some different type of maps that look at these Russian soldiers. They uh, wear some bad uh, shoes and they no shoes as they have uh, uh, without shoes go and, and it helps people to feel better that helps that look the soldiers look not professional so please keep relax all will be all right just just be safe and uh, and you must know that our Ukrainian army is very powerful and they destroy this Russian army. and it was very helpful for that time because we saw these maps uh, and oh, okay, thank you. It is Russian, but they that have a uh, dark side of these maps because because uh, when you saw these maps about that the Russian army is not powerful army, that that it's uh, uh, that it uh, army of uh, some men without shoes, without weapons, um, you. So, some 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 people uh, they begin began to think that uh, that, that it's um, sorry when when it, when <laughs> when it start about uh, war terms uh, that my English is not very better because I, I had no term uh, war in school sorry uh, so so I, I don't know some type of wars I I had I had a term garden so <laughs> tell me about peaches and <laughs> and about apples. But я трошки українською. Коли це трошки те, що нам показували меми про погану російську армію, нівелювало здобуття української армії в цих перемогах. The fact that we were shown this bad Russian army, bad equipped Russian army, uh, it was uh, uh, nivelating. Uh, the uh, wins of our Ukrainian army, it like made it easier for Ukrainian army to win over. Тому що меми фіксують найгірший момент російської армії, а насправді це дуже багато професіоналів і дуже багато техніки, дуже багато солдатів, потужна зброя і через так. Because memes, they are focused on the worst pieces, on the worst situations, on the worst equipment. But there are a lot of really professional uh, soldiers, there is a lot of professional weapon and... Техника, обмундирование, я забыл, экипировка. Equipment. И через те, that why stand up, make that thing that he told people that they 
laughing about this uh, stupid Russian soldiers, but people understand that it's very hard, that, that every centimeter of the occupied territories, it's very powerful professional Ukrainian army and it's powerful of people, of volunteers, of uh, soldiers, of uh, world community, and it's very important to support it, because if we if we'll see just only on the maps, we think that, oh, maybe we can give them uh, children with some uh, with some sticks and they do, and they occupied our territories. But no, it's very hard, and, and that's why stand up makes this uh, balance uh, from this ironic, uh, sarcastic memes uh, and truth. Uh, and that's why it's very important that make this balance. Uh, so yeah, now memes. Uh, and, and, and I, and I, for example, I did mem. Um, Maybe you saw this meme when uh, Crimea bridge is explosion, and uh, in, a, in a second screen, Marilyn Monroe, uh, mm -hmm. "Happy Birthday to You, Mr. President," uh, sing songs. That's my meme. I, <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I read a lot of uh, types that oh, Putin, Putin will uh, begin third war because this meme. Uh, he can no internet in his bunker, so <laughs> uh, it's meme. It's meme. It's he. He has internet. So uh, so yeah, it's it's important for social for social, but but okay, all right, must be balance in these maps. But generally, are there any <coughs> topic that you you are not uh, you have inner condition that you are not allowing yourself to joke about? Are there any uh, any topics that are just banned? Uh, this is the question to all of you. This is a topic what what make uh, people feel uh, worst. It's because we we don't we we don't make we understand that that now so uh, for example I, I I did perform in uh, for people in a in the occupied village where they have no their own houses because Russian soldiers destroyed these houses. And uh, these stamps of jokes here, uh, I did performing for the soldiers near front line, for example. Uh, this is second types of stamps. And uh, I did performing in um, uh, cities uh, where is Peace, peace, not, 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 not uh, it's, it's Relative. more, Relative. yeah, 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 um, so it's different types of terms, but we don't, we don't make jokes what make people uh, feel worse, for example, we can, uh, we can take a term, uh, a big uh, tragedy in Dnipro, what was uh, in 14th of January, but, but, but it will be not a type of joke, it will be just a uh, beginning of the joke, for the, for the understanding of term of joke, but then jokes will be in, in second vector. We, we don't do jokes about this tragedy because we have a lot of tragedy now in our country. So uh, from the stage, we must say just that things what make people feel better and uh, to discuss some different kinds of how we can do, how we can make our victory more closer. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Я погоджуюсь. Ми зараз не те, що є заборонені теми, а просто ми розуміємо функцію комедії і важливість важливість її і жартуємо тільки те, що підтримує людей і надихає. There are no topics which are banned as such, but we as comedians understand our role that we need to support and encourage the society. So we joke in order to give hope and encourage people. Я, наприклад, зараз у стендап-турі Україною, і дуже багато людей підходить, і дякую за те, що для них стендап на Ютубі, наприклад, це острівок їх психічного здоров'я. Просто дуже багато людей дякує за те, що ми робимо, тому ми розуміємо, наскільки важливо жартувати тільки про нашу силу і перемогу. Uh, I'm touring around Ukraine now and a lot of people come and thank, thank me and tell that they watch a lot of uh, stand-up uh, comedians on YouTube and say that it really helps them psychologically and it's their way to deal with the war and survive it. So as comedians we do understand how important our role is. And we joke now only about, or try to joke about our victory, how brave and courageous we are to give people this hope and support. 
and for example, time of explosions. Uh, you can make, uh, when you hear, uh, for, for example, who, who, who don't know here, uh, when there is uh, air alarm in our telephones, uh, what we do? We go on the two walls, because what, what is the rule of two walls? If you don't know rule of two walls, it's, it's you must find some place in your house where is two walls, because first walls will, will take explosion uh, by uh, herself, and uh, when some pieces of the stones of glasses will fly to you, and second wall will take these pieces, and you, in in safe place, uh, yeah, it's sorry, it's our reality. <laughs> and for example, if you tell about this to uh, the rule of two walls in Kiev, they understand these jokes. For example, they yeah, we must go for the two walls. Uh, if you tell this joke in the West, where there's not not a lot of explosions in the cities, they say oh, we we don't go in the two walls. Uh, so uh, yeah, we hear uh, air alarm, but we understand that maybe we can we we can. We cannot go to the two walls. When you, I when I told this joke in Kharkiv, they, uh, they they look at me. What two walls? Are you kidding me? What the fuck? No. <laughs> we, because there are a lot of explosions every day. When you told this joke in in Mekolaev, uh, when uh, when I did a performing there, uh, it was city near front line. I I I don't know, maybe 35 kilometers. So Russian artillery, uh, they can. Um, with artillery, artillery missiles, and uh, in this night, uh, when the night before, when we did, did the performance there, uh, there were a lot of explosions, 30 uh, in 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 uh, destroyed building, and uh, uh, Russian killed uh, people. And when you do a performing there, and you told about the two walls, it's a different uh, meaning of these words. And when you tell uh, for the soldiers these jokes about two walls, they Okay. <laughs> All right, two walls. Okay, because uh, it's. Let me show you a example. What the example? What type of humor uh, in sociality in different types of uh, our groups? For example, what kind of jokes in have our soldiers, our brave soldiers? Uh, when I did, to the Ukrainian version. Я робив виступ в Миколаєві, це близько до фронту було. There was a performance in Mykolaiv which is very close to the front line. Після виступу підійшла жінка і сказала, чи можеш ти зачекати 5 хвилин, двоє військових їдуть з передової, не встигають на стендап. Can you and there was a woman uh, who came and asked if uh, Vasily could have waited a couple of minutes because there were two military guys who were coming from the front line and they were a bit late. Я сказав, ну, звичайно, це велика честь для мене, я зачекаю, скільки потрібно. And he answered that, that yes, of course, because it's such an honor to me. І приїжджають двоє військових з передової, вони повністю в екіпіровці. And so there were two military guys who came from the front line fully equipped. І вони кажуть, попали під артобстріл, вибачай за запізнення. <laughs> And they are answering like, well, you know, we got on, under the artillery artillery attack, excuse me, uh, sorry that we are late. Я сказав, що страшного, і вони мені кажуть, хочеш прикол? And uh, he is answering like, never mind, and they are like, do you want a joke? Я кажу, я не впевнений, але, але давайте. And Vasily is like, I'm not sure, but like, okay, go on. Кажуть, їдемо в машині, починається артилерійський обстріл. Ми вискакуємо з машини, немає жодної ямки, де ми можемо сховатись. And so they are in the car, and uh, the fire starts, and there is no any hole around the, where can hide, so they are jumping out of the car. І я лежу, і товариш мені каже, блін, Ну все походу, а я йому відповідаю, та ще й на стендап запізнюють. And so they are out of the car and they lay down and his friend is telling like one of the guys is telling to another guy like well probably that's all and the other guy is answering yeah and we are also late for our stand up. і потім один із них і потім він каже, знаєш, як ми дурачимось, коли ми сидимо в окопах і росіяни нас обстрілюють по позиціям зі всього, що в них є. And uh, one of them is uh, saying that, uh, would you like to know how we are making jokes when we are in our positions under the fire? 
ми дзвонимо в поліцію і кажемо «Алло, негайно приїжджайте, тут хулігани стріляють». І потім каже, інколи ми викликаємо піцу, замовляємо піцу. І деякі приїжджають. So that's powerful humor and that type of humor would have our soldiers, because humor is very powerful thing that would make you feel better and this powerful soul. This is it. Amazing examples. Yeah. And yeah. And it demonstrates both the, uh, the, the routine of the war when you got used to the challenge, uh, to being all the time in danger and accepting the possibility of your death coming just any moment, right? And it makes also the humor being very sharp. Uh, as a reaction to this reality. But uh, still, the question about their uh, selection of jokes and... Um... Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm like the comedian in Sweden that are spreading the worst bad mood ever because I'm always talking about the truth. In, in, in the bottom line, it's all about the truth or, or, or the hypocrisy of, the, of this world or the, the things. So I see always the humor in some other places than maybe other, other people does. Uh, so I have done some very, very, very good bad jokes. You know, like uh, when I was in New York, uh, just some years after the 9-11, I did a joke because I tried to be an a, a English-speaking stand-up comedian. I tried to be a big star over there, now I'm here, so, <laughs> so it didn't it went so well. Because I was on the stage in Manhattan and I told them that oh, I'm very glad to be here in New York but I've got some bad memories from New York because one of my relatives died in 9-11. It was he who flew the plane. <laughs> so it was like, you know... And, uh, for me it was a joke because it's a, it's a joke about how they see me as a Muslim Kurdish comedian and, uh, and uh, it's a joke. But for them it was about timing, place. This is not the right place, man. You know, like that, and um, and that's always under because I was in my um, homeland in Kurdistan, the part of that is occupied by Iraq, and this is like some, just some years after their liberation. So they also have experienced a lot of war, a lot of uh, oppression, a lot of you know their relatives are dead, their villages are destroyed, and I joked about the thing because. For me, it's also, as a stand-up comedian, it's my obligation, you know, it's, it's like a, it's a duty to also criticize my own people, to criticize my own leaders, to criticize my own, you know. So I told them now, like, they have been free for like three years or something from the occupation, and they have just started their, um, their parliament and their, uh, you know, and, and their right, and, and, uh, and they have started to vote, and the democracy has started to grow. So I told them, because the Kurdish community has a problem with uh, honor killings. You know, like uh, a woman can't do what the man can, you know? So I told the, the it was like 700 politicians, militaries, and every, you know, the top elite, and the French ambassador was there, and the Swedish ambassador, and the Kurdish prime minister, and everybody was there. You know, like, and for me, when I got that job, the guy said to me, this is your opportunity to be a great star in Kurdistan now. You have the opportunity. But I destroyed that because <laughs> what I joked about. <laughs> because I told them that uh, you, you, always, you always talk about, now you have your freedom here. Where are the freedoms that you fought for? Where are the freedoms for your sister, for your mothers, for your wives? Where are those freedoms, you know? And you talk, and you talk about honor. You talk that your, the honor of a woman are, you know, between her legs. Is, is that it? Where do you honor it lives? Is that also, and how, is, how big is your honor? <laughs> and there are, you know, grand politicians and leaders, and they were very furious about me and very angry. And I told them that, my mama always said, my mother, she's a very strong Kurdish woman, and she said that if honor is here, I 
piss with it ten times a day. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a catastrophe. And this was a live live on the television, so they cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, you know, the, and, they, and the, the next plane took me home. <laughs> so it was like that, you know, I couldn't do that. Because, yeah. So it was also, for me, as a stand-up, uh, yes, you know, uh, as a comedian, as a star, or whatever you do, you can be as grand as you want to, but you have also to be a, a position to your own, you know, like, because to make them better make your country better, to make your society better. But I know that there's always time for s stuff, but I don't have that, you know. I'm like, uh, yes, there's some <laughs> disturbance over there. But yes, you are, you, you are right, because you have to give your people, your soldiers, uh, the faith, the, you know, the courage, the, the laughter. But uh, for me also, it's about, you know, sometimes criticize the, the things also. And that's very interesting because we're coming here to two topics. First, uh, the political censorship as such, if, that, if it exists um, in the liberal, liberal democracies, and so you, are, you have experience of living in Sweden, right? And you, you come with this background there, and, um, and probably there is the difference in this yeah. uh, perception and habits, and um, also Ukraine is the quite a cradle of uh, democratic movements with the Maidan and demonstrations before that and now the, uh, the strong resistance uh, for almost a year. Um, so how, how free um, is, uh, is the space where you can uh, joke about? So if, do you feel there could be any political censorship as such? This could be one question that we touch and the second one is about generally uh, you as stand-up comedians, all of you, do you think you have the uh, possibility to change the society, uh, to, to, like you mentioned, uh, bring the uh, cri critiques to criticize certain issues uh, in order to make them look different? Моє питання було щодо того, взагалі, чи існує політична цензура, як ви, чи є так, такий феномен в Україні, в демократичній країні, де були Майдани і, і так далі. І друге питання також з приводу того, чи ви можете змінювати суспільство, чи ви можете на нього впливати через гумор, через свої, свою критику його? Як, як ви вважаєте? Я думаю, у нас немає особливо політичної цензури, тому що у нас немає на телебаченні якогось стендап-продукту. У нас є гумористичні. I don't think we have any political censorship, uh, but the reason is because I don't think that our TV shows uh, many stand-up shows. Uh, Mostly humor pro humor humoristic pro humor programs, but not stand-up. Але це не перша причина, перша, бо ми вільні і незалежні. But it's not the first reason. The first reason is actually because we are independent. And we like freedom. Я не можу уявити, щоб на нас впливали через якусь політичну позицію. Ну, зрозуміло, що вже за Януковича ніхто не буде. Бо це свідомо, це не тому, що не можна, тому що всі коміки після вторгнення, в чому велика зміна, як мені відчувається, стали дуже дорослі і свідомі. Like uh, after the full scale, scale invasion, uh, all comedians have grown and developed as personalities, so we have our strong positions. We, uh, it's impossible to have any oppression on us or to influence us in a certain way. We have our position and we are ready to stand up for it. І ще велика зміна полягає в тому, що до війни мало з коміків були політичними. Тобто це була якась особлива ніша, яку займали один-два коміки і 95-й квартал. Що можна одне говорити? Який там проміжок? Okay, so before the war, uh, uh, just uh, comedians, they, they were not really involved in the politics, except the 95th quartal, where actually Zelensky comes from uh, as a leader. Yeah. Uh, so uh, comedians were just a separate group, like a community which wasn't really involved into the politics. 
Але після вторгнення всі коміки почали жартувати про політику, і для мене це велике здивування, тому що мій стиль до вторгнення це був якийсь типу легка, там світла, дурачна комедія. А після вторгнення я така політ політика, і для мене це теж and what surprises me personally because uh, what changed uh, after the war started, all the comedians started joking about the politics and about war. Uh, like me, as an example, my jokes before the war, they were light, uh, fresh, n nothing nothing serious, uh, but now I just really joke about politics. About Your jokes! Svetlana. <laughs> 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 about the pol political situation and this sometimes because we think about it when uh, start uh, invasion. 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 Oh, new word. <laughs> uh, and the second uh, question? Чи може змінюватися, чи ви можете змінювати суспільство через теми, які ви підіймаєте? Через критику? It, it seems to me that uh, in stand up uh, what you're also doing is you bring in the very um, important questions uh, that you feel should be changed yeah um, and uh, by this by by bringing them to the public you are able to uh, so the race question and propose the very liberal uh, discussion with the audience and the audience <laughs> might reflect on this and um, it is a very good uh, way of doing this because it, it is um, it is through the humor so it, no one uh, make so it is not like a very strong political statement that uh, will be opposed by uh, but you it seems that you are doing you can do this in a very mild way by by pretending not very be very serious but raising very serious questions Я зараз почну, Василь, продовжити. Я думаю, велика перевага стендапу в тому, що ми можемо дати... Велика перевага, на відміну від інших видів мистецтв, в тому, що ми можемо дати дуже швидку реакцію, в тому, що продакшн виробництво стендапу ну, може зайняти типу, від п'яти хвилин там, до дня. Ти подумав і одразу можеш дати. Тому стендап в цьому плані дуже сильний майданчик. I think our advantage as stand-up comedians is that we can uh, give quick reactions, so we can react almost immediately, sometimes in five minutes, when all other types of art they require time, the production takes time, so we as stand-up comedians are very quick, and that's uh, our main thing. І е, суспільство українське в цілому, і стендап коміки, і люди е, дуже через вторгнення подорослішали, зрозуміли, що е, стали усвідомлювати і аналізувати культурну окупацію, про те, що Росія просто, коли, е, який наратив е, нам внушався, нав'язувався, е, що, типу, все українське погане, а що українське хороше, це російське. Ну, типу, Росія займалась просто газлайтингом, така, це наше, Малєвич, це наше, ну, якщо хороше, то це наше. Тому, коли ми почали все це рефлексувати і усвідомлювати, стендап, зокрема, став дуже сильним майданчиком і з'явились сильні лідери думок. All, all uh, comedians and all the Ukrainian society in general, in general has transformed and has grown significantly since the beginning of the war. So we started reflecting on uh, not only on what's happening and all the tragedies, but also on our historical um, uh, heritage and how long our culture language has been suppressed. Uh, we started rethinking that why we were taught to believe that everything which is Ukrainian is bad and everything is Russian is good and why Malevich, who is a very uh, famous artist, is considered to be Russian if he's actually a Ukrainian artist. Um, so, since the war began, um, stand-up uh, comedians um, became a powerful tool in Ukraine to tell about the truth, to reflect on what's going on and how the transformation in the country is happening. And uh, can stand-up comedians uh, change society? And uh, yes, of course, uh, because everyone can change society in democracy. Uh, because you, every human, can change. Uh, because when you will start to change society, for, uh, first element who will change, who will be changed, it will be you. So it's it's everyone, every every type of you. That, that's. Uh, 
uh, that's why now every human, a lot of humans, a lot of uh, people in Ukraine, they change society, they, they don't feel that they are small people in big country, no, they are big people in, in big country, because now uh, we just have voice what can hear more people than, for example, uh, my, my uh, father on a kitchen with his <laughs> relatives, for example, uh, because we can, we can uh, tell some things from the stage and, and uh, 100 or 1000 people can hear it. But now, in, in our social media, for example, um, there can be some, some, some man, some woman with audience of uh, 85 uh, people, uh, yeah, uh, describers in Instagram, and they make uh, some fundraise for some stuff for the army. Um, because it's our life that we fundraise a lot of things for our army. It's Every day, every you make some repost uh, in your Instagram, you make some, and, and, and yeah, it's 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 second stuff of powerful of stand-up comedy. It's not just a humor because we know that humor is powerful for sociality, but but it's not powerful on the front line. Yeah, sure, it's it's very good for the minds, but but we need weapon, and and that what uh, stand-up comedy is doing now. They fundraise a lot of money, a lot of money. Uh, for example, Sveta, they they have a tour, they have some percent that give to the military, our stand-up club give some percent to the military, we make some charity concerts, some charity tours in Europe, we cut our hair and uh, fundraise some money for, for yeah, because that was my hair, uh, the price of this hair, one million and uh, two hundred uh, hryvnas, uh, two hundred thousand hryvnas for the military, because it was... Uh, <laughs> Ukraine, a lot of creative uh, 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 men, women who fundraise money uh, for the army. They, they, because we understand that we, I don't know if you know this ter theory of uh, six, uh, how it's uh, in shake it and shake. Handshake, you know this theory. Yes, yeah, that, that uh, uh, on a six uh, handshake, uh, you will uh, handshake with, uh, I don't know, with the queen uh, or, uh, or, or yeah. With Biden. In, huh? with Biden. With Biden, yeah. Uh, with Biden second. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, in Ukraine, we have, I don't know, maybe two or three uh, front handshakes. handshakes. And uh, second handshake will be that uh, man or woman on the front line. And it will be third handshake and it will be a dead friend on the front. So now we understand that we must to to uh, MNEC. It's it's a lot of so so people with audience with eighty uh, with eight people make a fundraise for term vision uh, things uh, for the soldier because it. It, it's her son, for example, and, and her son told that mom, I must have this uh, thermal vision because because uh, I, I saw this a lot of a lot of things from the western uh, side uh, of the world uh, where uh, some people say Biden give one hundred million thousand dollars why they don't have anything <laughs> why they have, don't have uh, why they don't want uh, planes they have everything they have money in the war it's 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 a little money very little money because because it's it, it's it's very expensive very expensive so uh, every people uh, every human in in ukraine fundraise money for the military thermovision the amenities uh, uh, some body uh, body, body armor uh, and yeah, yeah, cars, a lot of cars. So every people in Ukraine change society now, and and you, <laughs> and also you, because because we know we we we, we know that uh, Sweden, uh, yeah, and, uh, Sweden, 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 sorry, uh, Sweden give a lot of weapons, a lot of tanks uh, to 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 Ukraine, and uh, uh, and we know it, and and uh, a lot of Ukrainians here and. Uh, uh, Sweden is very um, 
supporting Ukraine, give uh, give houses, give food, and it's very important, and we feel it, and it's very. If, if, if when when I was in in in, uh, in charity tour in Europe, and uh, uh, and when I we know that uh, here in German uh, in Germany in Berlin, you give us something for example this and this and say yeah you know <laughs> and we say yes we know everything and say wow thank you no thank you <laughs> and it's and it's type of the of uh, um, fundraise energy of all the world of the supporting i know it's uh, you, you understand everything but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, in this uh, you know like can comedians uh, change the world yes they have they do that now and they will Continue to like if we, we go back in the history, like uh, Charlie Chaplin, he, he he did jokes about uh, Mussolini and Hitler, because these world leaders, they are dictators, are very fragile. They have very fragile egos. All fascists uh, can't take jokes, you know, no, because fascism is that you are the best, you are the greatest, everybody else. And when you make jokes about them, they because almost. Every comedy thing is about uh, the fall of status, you know, the fall of, you know, like, uh, and the balloon goes, you're yeah. nothing, you're a human being as me, you know, you poo too, you know, like, <laughs> you're human beings. And like Chaplin did with, the, with, the, with the Hitler, he made him, you know, like this screaming uh, loony tune that was, you know, very, he wants to be the top, you know, like they, with the chairs, you know, like who's on the top and he played with the world. Very nice, very uh, artistic, very fine and, and Hitler wa wanted to kill him. So he, he tried to assassinate uh, Chaplin several times. And, uh, and this happens also today, like in Sweden, comedians have changed that Sweden can't participate in NATO <laughs> because of Erdogan, <laughs> you know, because he's a fragile dictator, yeah. and and because of some jokes in TV and some so so it was not just the uh, the, the burning of the Quran, it was the jokes in Swedish state television by by comedians that you know it was a it was a harmless joke that he sits in the bathtub and. Uh, that was it, and he said, "No, you can't joke about me, and we will stop your, uh, you know, membership of NATO." So, they, so every comedian can change the world and will change the world if if he wants to, you know, like, uh, and, and we have that power because of uh, of of our art, because it's it's making fun of the power. That is the best <coughs> power. But Ivar Zelensky is comedian. Yeah, I know, and that is also, and, and that is also because because we live in a world that the comedians are the one who are the brave ones and telling the truth, and we have the clowns that are leads us, like Trump, like Putin, like Erdogan, like Orbán, you know, and the, and this is a dangerous world, and and the, because it's it's different to be a comedian than to be a you know like a. Like, uh, because, well, as you told uh, the audience today, the absurdity in the Russian propaganda is so absurd that you can't make that up, you know, because when you also write absurdism, you know, <laughs> their absurdism is too much. Yeah. yeah, because you can't joke with Trump. He's like the joker of the joker, because he's, you know, like, you can't make that shit up, because that's why, and that's why also, uh, when we choose leaders, when we choose, we will, we have to be seeking the truth, you know, like, uh, yeah, and, and that's why also, like now, I'm very glad that the Ukrainians in Sweden and the Swedes in Sweden uh, support Ukrainians and support the, the Ukrainian brave women and, and men on the front, you know, but we have also our problems with this hypocrisy of the world, because Yes, Sweden give a lot of money, a lot of uh, aid, a lot, a lot of armor to, to Ukraine. But they're still buying oil from Russia. Yeah. You know, and, no, and you have to talk about that also. Because we live in this stupid world that, uh, that our leaders are more, uh, more keen on holding power than empower their people. You know, and that is why... Ukraine is bleeding because if they stopped Putin 
in 2008 in Georgia or 2014 in Crimea. We wouldn't have this, you know? Yeah. But uh, the world is a hypocrisy. It's, 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 it's really sad to see. And yes, the Ukrainian people are very brave, but, but the Europe and the rest of the world lets you die. Because if they w really wanted to stop this war, they could have stopped it. But we have other things to think of, you know, the, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's sad. And maybe it's also uh, made in comparison, I mean, if we will take the wars um, that have been in Georgia or in uh, Yugoslavia and some yeah. other places, uh, there haven't been even such a reaction that there is now in terms of supporting yeah. Ukraine. So. Uh, a lot of hypocrisy, but still the, the very important shifts that have been happening since the invasion. We witnessed this um, with uh, all their um, weapons coming to Ukraine, but not enough to have the liberation. That's true. This, it's always the, uh, the balance not to be too harsh and not to provoke someone, even though it's a very probably false. Um, trajectory but um, we are also coming to the question of um, this the, of this war and the technology of it I mean we are it is almost um, visible through through the live stream we, we make photos from Ukraine we immediately get a lot of information what what's what has happened there and this is the way how we can be informed all over the world um, about the situation in Ukraine. Uh, so maybe it became a little bit more easy not um, um, not to not to be neglected just because it is uh, very much mediatized, right? You 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 have photos, you have videos, you have uh, people who are who are able to talk about this. But how has it been uh, historically? Are there any um, any examples maybe from the Second World War or maybe from other wars or, or other peri periods of time when uh, humor was also used du during the war and, and helped somehow? No, of course it was and uh, actually um, there is this term it's called gallows humor and the gallows humor is the one when you actually you go to death you are going to be on the gallows yeah but you are joking about your death literally like one minute before you're gonna hang yourself up uh, there and uh, it started from the medi uh, medieval Europe and this term is uh, very well known in the science but it's quite interesting to see that um, it started to be well known in the 40s when uh, one uh, okay so when Czechoslovakia but then was occupied by the Germans and uh, that was the first time when the uh, scientists uh, who were there back then also in Czechia they started to pay attention to the way how people joke about Germans and about also the way how Europe doesn't react at all, didn't react at all and the jokes were very similar to the, the way how we, uh, the, the jokes that we have now in Ukraine they're really similar about these deep concerns and qu yeah quite we could say it like deep concerns jokes uh, or, and uh, that it's better to be killed but not, to, for example there was a chicken that said that it's better to be killed but not to lay eggs for Hitler or for example that oh why it takes so long to uh, come to, for England to also um, come to help us oh, because they are learning the, um, the verbs in German because German <laughs> has this also the diff difficult grammar or, but also it was quite surprising to see that the Holocaust itself, for example, and the, the camps like Auschwitz, for example, uh, they, they also had lots of the people who were there in the camps, the Jew, uh, Jewish people, they actually had their own jokes as well. And uh, that was really fascinating for me to read this, for example, the articles where um, uh, people were saying that, for example, when they got this haircut, when you enter the, the camp, yes, and you have your, sha your hair shaved away, and one of the ladies, were, one of these uh, camp survivors, said that she started laughing immediately and said, oh, it's the first time when I got the free haircut. <laughs> and, and people around were really like, they were crying. And the, even people around couldn't understand how, how come that she could laugh back then. But for her, it was her reaction to this traumatic, yeah, to this stress. And it's, it's really fascinating how, how humor can, and, and, and people who, yeah, who were in the camps, they all say that actually yeah, that, that's how they were fighting against the Nazis back then, because that's how you still, when you laugh, it's like the folklore, you know, in every 
fairy tale when you there is this uh, thrice ten kingdom Tridigata Tsarstvo, yeah? You enter there, this is the place where the dead live actually. And this is where you can't laugh because once you laugh you, you show that you're alive. And this is like the rule that you, if you if you look closer to all the fairy tales you will see it. So it's even in this like very deep rules that if you laugh you're alive. If you don't laugh that's not okay. The society is not here. The society is sick if people don't laugh at some really serious problems. And, so and when we talk about stand-up comedian, uh, stand-up comedian has its roots in the Jewish community, Jewish history, Jewish, uh, you know, because uh, 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 as, a, as, a, as a nation and a people, the Jews have been always oppressed and always, you know, hunted and the, the ghettos and the everything. So they have this kind of uh, humor, you know, to, for surviving. And the stand-up comedians' roots are Jewish from the beginning because a lot of the first beginning com comedians in uh, America are, you know, like Lenny Bruce, uh, Woody Allen, and now after that Seinfeld and stuff. So they, it's it's a way of of uh, joke about the worst things, you know, and uh, that's also cool because yeah. Very interesting. And, and I was wondering about generally kitchen of making jokes. So how do you, how can you create a joke? What should be the conditions that, that you are doing this? Are you, should you be very angry at this moment or very relaxed or, or you just sit at the table and start thinking about the, the plans for the, for the jokes? I can tell the joke of uh, Anton Tymoshenko, it's our friend and a uh, very good comedian from Ukraine. He, he, when journalists ask, uh, asked uh, him to, uh, how you make these jokes, and he say it's very easy, you just go on a balcony, look in the sky, and there are rockets, and you just take this, <laughs> these jokes from the sky, from the from Russian, Russian rockets. Uh, it, it's different times, sometimes it's, uh, it's look like a uh, Fucking Russians now, the Russians make jokes because you have angry, you angry, and you and you know that it's it's humor. It's very good type to to make to take your angry and to converse it to the energy of humor or to energy of help. For example, it's very good um, days for fundraise. For example after the big tragedies. It's not cynical, it's not cynical, it's not cynical, it's not cynical, but it's true, because, because after the big tra tragedies, for example, when in Ukraine a big explosion, a Russian explosion, Russian rocket in Dnipro, in this day uh, fundraising money a lot of, because, because people and they want to, 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 to give this money for this stop, for this victory, and, and, and it jokes, it's, it's, it's similar to, because you feel this angry, you, you oh, I, I can't tell you, because now I feel very bad, because, <laughs> um, because now I'm here in Sweden, and uh, I know that, uh, that, that now in Ukraine it's very hard, and, and I know, I, I speak with soldiers uh, on the front line, and I know what situation here, and now when I'm here, when I drink coffee, I feel, I feel very bad, so uh, that's why uh, this film is of jokes, it's, uh, it's it's very good type to to feel uh, better. So it's type like like therapy, uh, th th therapeutic uh, things. But sometimes you just understand that you make to make you, you you must make jokes. It's it's not like fullness. It's it's just your work. You go on, you you go on the work. You you make presentation. <laughs> it's your work. Uh, so it's not Sorry. because <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's very good. I have no presentation. <laughs> Uh, you are the presentation with your oh, Yes, thank you, but I want to, to make some presentation on TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's our work, it's our, so, so that's why we must do it and, we, and we, we, we just feel it. Sometimes we feel, sometimes it's work, you know, Sveta, it's... Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's therapy. For me, it's therapy. Страшно, страшно було дуже перед першим разом, коли почалася війна. Перший стендап був через місяць. My first stand up was after the full invasion a month after it and it was I was very scared. Бо ми ще не розуміли, чи можна жартувати над тим, що відбувається і як саме жартувати, як які можуть бути жарти. And I was worried so much just because we still couldn't understand if we can joke about the war 
or not, and if we can, how we can do it. І перед першим виступом я думала, якщо я зараз погано виступлю, люди засмутяться, бо ще й війна вони такі. Війна ще й стендап хреновий, да? I was very concerned before my first performance after the war, uh, because I thought, okay, people are so upset, and now they came here, and if I fail, they will think, gosh, what is going on, and just like such a bad, like, comedy show here, on the top of that. І перші жарти були про те, що я не виїжджаю з країни через те, що не хочу стояти в черзі. And my first joke was that I'm not leaving Ukraine um, and don't, don't uh, flee uh, the country just because I don't want to queue on the border. Ну, тому що ви знаєте, що багато було людей виїжджало, от, або те, що я боюсь, що мене застане ракета в ванні, і я буду просто помру в некрасивій позі. Мені розчарується мама, скаже, ти хоч це можеш зробити нормально. Okay, so you know when the war started, a lot of people were fleeing and there were long queues uh, at the border. So that was my first joke, that I, I'm not leaving because I don't want to queue. Ah. And my second, my second uh, joke was uh, that I'm afraid to die in the bathtub because I may be just not nice looking when I die and what my mom will think about me when I will be found out. Uh. І це були мої щирі рефлексії, якісь страхи. І коли я принесла на це на стендап на перший, і ще не знала, як відреагують люди, і коли, коли почула сміх, з мене теж знялась велика напруга, що ми зараз разом, що ми проживаємо один і той самий досвід. And in fact, they were my real fears. And when I came on the stage and shared, sincerely shared them, and I heard people laughing, I understood that we are the one and we are coming, coming through the the same experience at the moment and we understand each other. Тому переважно зараз стендапу я вдячна, що я можу зняти напругу з себе, з людей, відчути їх якийсь катарсис. Це насправді терапія, тому що коли ти за день читаєш новини, в тобі збирається напруга, і коли люди сміються, напруга дивовижним чином просто розчиняється. Uh, I really uh, appreciate and very grateful to stand up comedy because it is my tool to reveal my stress and to help people to relieve their stress as well. Uh, during the whole day while reading news you get really tense and um, uncertain of the future but when you start laughing everything disappears. Yeah, stand up it's a cool instrument but my second work it's graphic design and sometimes I make poster and hope that light is off because I don't understand why I must uh, now make this poster uh, because I listen a rocket uh, outside outside the window and I think oh it's a cake shop now <laughs> needs this poster I can die <laughs> that's all thank you <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, you know like when, when the worst things happens that's when I begin to be creative you know like I when uh, like tragedies happen. I, I, I don't know, it's something wrong with me. I know that, but I, I see always the fun things in stuff. I see them from other areas and I'm just looking at the fun part. It's not funny, you know, it's not funny, but it's quite as a uh, survival mechanism. It's, it's, for me, it's like that because I've also ca coming from a, a disastrous area, you know, uh, with shootings, with killing, mass killings, and you know, oppression. And for us, and for me, I, I can remember it from my childhood, as from the age of five to, you know, uh, till we fled to Sweden, we had to find something to laugh about every day, or we couldn't survive that oppression, you know. Uh, two of my brothers are dead now, and, and, and everything, you know, it's upside down, and you have to find the, and I, I, I remember, all my, from, from the beginning, from my childhood to now, I just want the people to feel good around me. Because that's when you, you know, when something bad is happening, you, you, you want to find something that is funny in that. So I try to do that. And sometimes other people say, oh man, it's not the time now, please, you know? And I understand that. Because you didn't do the wave after the tsunami. You know, like that. 
And it's a joke, but not everybody understand that now, like that, you know? Because it's, it's you, you have to be in that, because all jokes are about timing and place. Timing and place, it's all about that. So it's, when, when time has passed, the jokes become stronger. But if it's like that, it can be strong for you and your nearbys, but it can also be offensive for the people around you who are living in that, excuse me, but in that shitty circumstances. It can be like offensive for them. But everything is about timing and place. All, all the things we can do. Yeah. We have still a bit of time for the questions. Um, so please raise your hand. Okay. No, because uh, uh, dehumanization was in the beginning of innovation. When when I told you, when when was oh, it's not it's not uh, humans, it's animals, it's fucking dogs. A шуточка зі словами. Там де з солдатів викладали фразочки. А, да, це це супер. Я теж це робив. Хто це не робив? Це не робив. Програма вот є. I think the dehumanization was in the beginning. Now it's it's not a dehumanization. It's just uh, laughing uh, to make powerful for you. Uh, it's because, and it's second part of these times because uh, this Twitter, these tweets with this uh, uh, dehumanization memes read not on the Ukrainians, read Russians too, and it's a uh, ipso uh, for them uh, for. Internal propaganda. Yeah, for, for them, because their soldiers what uh, came to our land, they have this social media and they read this and they look this and this carry and, and it's that what we what this man's day for them. They must to, to watch this. They must understand what will happen with them and they must they must understand that they have a choice to to make their hands up and to go to our I, I don't know. Короче, yeah, в полон. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's a good thing because they will, they can live here because there they will die. So uh, and now we don't do dehumanization. No, we do humanization of these people because we understand that it's not 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 a, not the things from the space where they don't understand these rules. No, they understand rules and they and they kill people because not because they are. They're human, not humans. They are humans, but want to, to kill people in the different reasons, and everyone now understand it that it's uh, people what make evil things. Yeah. Maybe. You won't dehumanize your um, the person who is the same as you. You dehumanize only those who you want to dehumanize because, yeah, as you said, it's a survival skill, but. It's not. It won't it, um, be the same to those who are in your field. So no, it, it won't happen. No, and I totally agree because it's also a part. The dehumanizing, actually humanizing, to show what's going to. It's true. It's absolutely true. And uh, this this type with uh, that Russian soldiers' bodies uh, of these pictures, it was uh, Russian propaganda started this because because it was the news from Russian propaganda that uh, Ukrainian soldiers make these uh, dead bodies and make a portrait <laughs> of Bandera. Because the first of January it was his birthday. Yeah, right. yeah and, and Russian propaganda made this news. I told you that Russia stole an absurd, my absurd, because, and they make it the this truth, and they, our uh, designers and our and IT yeah. technologists, they look this news, and they, hmm, <laughs> interesting fucking idea, uh, and they make this, sure, and, and so, Russia was first. Yeah, thanks. We have also Thank another you for question. question and that's it. I mean, for and Тобто там були два питання про шаржівницьку мову, і друге про те, коли організують чемпіонат для диктаторів, щоб вони прийшли і слухали. Uh, we have such uh, championship. It's uh, have a name. Uh, uh, court. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, 
I think that we hear a lot of things there. Uh, for the Ukrainian, yeah, a lot of Ukrainian uh, stand-up comedians is now uh, make make jokes uh, in Ukrainian. I think it's not it's it's, it's growing, but growing of uh, Swedomist. Uh, self-conscious. Self-conscious. Yes, yeah, self-conscious. Wow, very beautiful word. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, before 24th of February, uh, I made jokes in Russian because uh, because I don't know because it, because I I can and because uh, I don't know why and after 24th of February I have a question in my head why and I have no answer and that I think why why you do it and from 24th of February I became to be a Ukrainian comedian and my uh, language in uh, with friends with uh, uh, parents uh, is Ukrainian and uh, for the growing uh, Ukrainian audience for for make people change from Russian uh, name from Russian language to Ukrainian I think that for me what I do for this I made uh, make a lot of content uh, in Ukrainian so um, so I think that when because Ukrainian is very beautiful language and uh, I, I recommend to read some Ukrainian books to, to watch some Ukrainian films to watch some uh, Ukrainian music I think that when this culture is growing up uh, we have a lot of audience uh, for, for the changing of uh, language uh, but, but in abroad when I abroad I very ask that, that if you're from Ukraine uh, please uh, speak Ukrainian because because now, I, when I hear some Russian uh, language, I, uh, because I don't know, I, I, when, when, I, when I hear uh, show or, or uh, when it's Russian language, but I, but I hear, for example, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, сегодня я пойду шо, чего? И я такие, okay, it's Ukrainian. <laughs> it's not. It's because when I hear, сегодня мы сходим, it's Russian. I must run from this place. So I ask you when you're abroad, please uh, speak Ukrainian because uh, it's feel better. Uh, yeah, my, my answer. Uh, I would add maybe a little bit about serious Ukrainians. I don't really agree about it at all. Okay, I don't agree about it because uh, folklore is full of really great love. Plus, the first, I mean, the first. Uh, mm, that we have, like I mean, Kotlarevsky originally, like Kotlarevsky and Naida. That's the first like modern Ukrainian, um, yeah, uh, piece that we have, and it's it's amazingly how funny it is, yeah, when you read it. And also, of course, it wasn't done by just Kotlarevsky because it stands again on this um, uh, spudei, yeah, the students, the, the travel, who traveled all around Ukraine in the 17th and 18th century, and they. They made amazing jokes because they had this classical education from the Skiv Mahila Academy, for example, or, or some other collegiums. But what they did, they, they started to understand that they can't earn money because they were always, they were basically begging for food and <laughs> yeah, they were really, really uh, poor, but they wanted to get some money for their education. And they traveled from one village to another, uh, singing songs, performing some. They, they were actually stand up comedians at that time. I don't know how well you know about yeah. these guys, but. That, that, that's the thing that it's it's a very long-lasting process. It started from this from the Baroque period, obviously, even earlier if you, if you come to the folklore. And uh, uh, what Shevchenko did, yeah, he mocked everything that he could do in uh, in uh, Saint Petersburg. And yeah, that picture, as you said, it's it's not about being so serious. It's a kind of actually mocking the subculture of uh, that guys who were doing this and the intellectuals who were doing it back time. So. I would just say that yeah, maybe we just rediscover it for ourselves, and we have to talk about more about that because yeah, as as you know, this proverb about two wins of Ukrainian culture: one is winning, yeah, one is about uh, crying, another one is about laughing all the time. Yeah, So that that's how we yeah, and we are balancing in between, as you said. Excellent. We don't have time and uh, two hours just run in a second. This means that it was a very intense and um, interesting discussion. So thank you very much, dear guests, uh, Daria, Vasil, Svetlana, us, and you, dear audience. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>